Well, hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and welcome to As Above, So Below, a rune and tarot divination for Thursday, the 16th day of March, 2023. Let's see, did I forget I did? Let me push this volume up a little bit. Well, I had every intention of doing that before I started and then I didn't, so there you go. I'm nothing if not consistent. Anyhow, let's take a look at uh, today's runes to get us started. This is your first time here. Welcome. I hope you'll click subscribe and come back and join our little tarot and rune family. Get the string out of there. Uh, so where we talk about uh, different uh, uh, ideas and concepts the runes and the tarot cards give us to help us with the decisions and our lives and how we think about things and all of that. Well, let's see. We got a Norn rune today, Nathis. Nathis is one of the three Norn runes, uh, Hagalaz, Nathis, and Isa, uh, in the Elder Futhark. Uh, this is about um, the need within or the friction within to manifest um, its necessity. It's that driving force to expand and, and, and to create. Um, it can be very protective. Uh, but it's that friction within to do something. Uh, it, it, in a way, it's similar to Ingus or Inguas, depending on how you see that particular one. Uh, but it's that it's that uh, essence of the seed when you when you plant it and and you water it and the and it's got this energy within for expansion and it grows. It's the same kind of energy with Nathis, although. Uh, Nathis, I, I view the Norn runes in the Elder Futhark as having maybe a little bit more power than the rest of the runes. Um, and, and so when you see a, a, one of those runes, they're very transformative. Uh, whether you're transforming within a fixed framework with, with Hagalaz or, or with Isa, you're aligning in your own source presence, which is very transformative. Uh, that one is the rune of the present moment. Uh, Nathis is the rune of the future and Hagalaz is the rune of the past. And so it's the whole triplicity of experience can be found in those three runes. And so I just tend to look at them a little differently, I think, than I do the other ones. Um, but I still view them all as soul, archi soul archetype cards. And when, and, and in this particular reading, the um, um, Elder Futhark rune is going to represent the above side of as above, so below. So the spirit side of things. And then the geomancy rune is going to represent the below side of things, or the ego side of things, or the physical side of things. There's air. There's fire. Okay, it looks like we have Tristitia. Is that this one? Yeah. Laetitia and Tristitia are the two runes that complement one another in uh, uh, geomancy. And whereas Laetitia would be would be joy uh, and very and happiness and all of that. Uh, you have here Tristitia, which is is sadness and grief, but it's on a level uh, almost of fixation. Uh, and uh, it's considered one of the evil runes uh, in geomancy. I don't look at it that way, but geomancers of old categorize some of them as evil. Cotta Draconis is another one, so is uh, Rubius. Um, but what it means is that there's a major effect by this. Uh, grief, condemnation, uh, not being able to let go. It's a very extreme uh, sense, I think, anyway. Uh, so so uh, if you're looking at the two runes together, having the friction within, having the higher will to let go of grief and sadness that, that you seem to get fixated on, you could look at this this way. Uh, we'll see if the cards uh, bear that out or, want, or they want to go in another direction. I am using a new deck. Um, it's a Rider weight deck, but it's very cool. It's It's got this kind of a shaded uh, border, which isn't truly defined, but it's almost like you're looking at uh, a window into, into the past or into someone's uh, subconscious. I don't know. I just thought it was very cool. There's another one. So you see, and I love the, the colors. The colors, uh, the color scheme is very similar to the one I've been using. Um, you know, with the different kind of blues and, and grays and whatnot. So it's it's doing the same kind of uh, 
well, kind of the same, kind of, maybe, maybe in the same shade range, uh, I'll say, let's just say that. But this was really cool. I was just looking at decks and I thought, well, this is cool. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle just a little bit more here. This is a new Dex, but it seems to not be as bad as that other one was uh, when I was first shuffling it. Even now, the cards are still pretty slippery, and they tend to go everywhere when they go everywhere. So it's like I don't want to take that chance <laughs> in here. So I always, you know, while I'm on, on the video to, of, of having to pick up cards off the floor. So, But this these, this one tends seems to be doing better. Uh, I was working with it uh, yesterday and the day before, and it didn't really seem to have the the shiny feel, although it is. It just doesn't seem to respond as as uh, erratically, and you know where you start to shuffle, and all of a sudden half the deck falls on the floor. That's always fun, isn't it? No. So anyway. Well, the pair of geese that come here every year and nest on our dock, um, I'm not sure if, she, I think she's laying. I don't think she's setting yet, but I think she's laying. But they're so sweet. <clears throat> they're so friendly to us. They know us. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, so um, I don't know if this is going to relate to Monday's reading, but we had... <clears throat> we had Rado and Conjunctio as the runes, and then we had Death, the Chariot, and the Moon. So three uh, uh, soul archetype uh, major arcana cards. Well, I have I have uh, three again today, three major arcana cards. So maybe this will be a, a, an extension of Monday's reading again, like we had last week. But the main idea uh, from Monday is to see a situation from a balanced, higher perspective and then understand the need to let go of any self-deception or deception from others, reject it, uh, and find a path forward together. Um, this is going to be a little bit different, though, maybe. I don't know. Um, let's, we'll just see how it reads, and, and we'll go from there. Um, we have the Emperor, the Tower, and the Empress. And I, I'm going to leave it in the, in the uh, order that I, that I drew the cards, I think. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the Emperor. Here we have the Emperor sitting on a stone throne. You see the ram's heads on each corner. This is a card of Aries, and so you're going to be looking at, uh, if you know someone who's an Aries, you know they're very initiative, they, they, uh, they uh, are very motivated, um, they like to control things, they like to control the direction of things, they're good leaders, they're good managers, <clears throat> unless, you know, they're ego-oriented or something, and then that can kind of go off the rails from time to time. Um, but you see here... Uh, there's actually a difference in color. Well, maybe there isn't in this particular card. In other decks, you'll see the, the mountains behind him, if that's what those indeed are, or the weird wa uh, rock face behind him or something. They're different colors, so it sort of shows the dark and light about him. Here, it looks more like they're the same color. So this is a card. You see the red around him. This is a card of strength. He's wearing a red... Uh, uh, cape or, or some kind of cloak or something uh, over uh, his battle attire. He's still got that on. You can see his boots there. Um, but the emperor represents the uh, father aspect of self. It's masculine energy, it's structure, it's pragmatism, authority, stability, uh, ambition, discipline, any, anything you can, you can attribute, anything Aries related you can tr attribute to this guy. Um, very disciplined and reasoned, um, but again, unless ill-dignified, and then he's kind of off the rails with his authority. Um, he comes after, he's, the, he's card number four of the, comes, so he comes after the Empress, which is card number three in the Major Arcana. And so after giving birth to creation, you know, then the consort comes in, and that's how I view him. I view him as her consort. Uh, so I view the Empress maybe with a little more power than I do the emperor, although the emperor can certainly assert his own power. Um, but I think you're talking here about some inner authority or authority that you express outward. So we'll just leave that at that. Being the card four, um, it's kind of a foundational type of a, of a uh, four is a foundational type of number. Again, it's practicality, pragmatism, 
uh, structures and it wouldn't be strength. Well, I mean, the strength of it, eight is more strength, but, <clears throat> but you have that grounding, that foundation. So there's strength there. <clears throat> and in the father role, say in the family, you mother and father, you know, in, in the past and the patriarchy of it all, that would be the person who was in charge of everything. Um, he's the boss. Uh, nowadays, of course, that's not that's not true. We know that that's an illusion. That that was a perception that you know the men in in society wanted the women to you know uh, bow down to them. And of course, that's not really going to happen anymore, right? <clears throat> I mean, it's not that that doesn't happen in people's lives. There's some people that do live that way still, where you know you're the the man of the house controls everything, but not in my house. So. We're on a even footing, my husband and I, and we always have been. And that's how we raised our boys. And so you look at their marriages and they're the same way. So, you know, you respect women and, and you don't put them in a lower position. Uh, but but in any event, though, we are talking about perhaps how we express authority. Um, and in terms of Nafis, there's that friction within to manifest. Uh, and then with Tristitia, uh, trying to let go of, of things that keep you stuck in, in the negative, stuck in the, uh, 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 in, in the emotion, in the, in, the, in the grief of something, in the sadness of something, because then you get into the revenge aspect of things. So you can see where that kind of energy can take you. Um, and with the emperor, maybe this is suggesting that whatever's going on Tristitia-wise, um, maybe it's really strong and if you're having a, I, I know how letting go of something is very hard uh it's very hard for anyone to do that some have an easier time of it than others but i think that we all go through that where it's difficult to let go of the grief or the anger or the or feeling like someone did something to us it's a very hard thing to let go especially when there's no justice involved you know and that's another thing with with the emperor there could be justice involved there as well uh, the tower, though, comes in, and it's the 16th card of the Major Arcana. And again, we see lightning coming in, blowing the uh, top off the tower, starting a fire. There's smoke everywhere. We see a couple of people falling, and we don't know. You know, maybe they fell to their death. Maybe they didn't. Uh, but you're looking at what looks like a, a, a man and a woman, possibly, uh, hard to tell sometimes in these cards uh, the way they draw them, but I've always interpreted it as a man and a woman. So if you're looking at balance, which we could be looking at here with the emperor and the empress, the receptive side and the projective side of self, uh, we could be rebalancing some of that. You know, part of Tristitia is holding on to grudges. Uh, and I saw this funny thing on social media where it, it took it looked at the, the the different signs of how long someone uh, holds grudges. And uh, there are some that will hold them forever. Um, I'm a Libra and, and it, it said 0.02 seconds and then I'm on to something else, uh, especially if there's an apology. Uh, so Librans let go of things easily if there's an apology. See, there's that justice factor in there. But if there's not, I'm sitting there waiting, going, OK. What's happening now? So, but I thought it was kind of amusing. But here we have, uh, here we have a rebalancing of things, a transformation. Not these is very transformative, but it's that inner will to make that happen. You know, sometimes you know to get out of that 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 feeling. You know, it takes it takes a real big choice to say, okay, I'm done with this, irrespective of what someone else is gonna do, irrespective of the apology that's owed. I, I'm not, I'm just, I can't go, I can't stay there, can't stay there anymore. And so the tower's coming in and there's disruption, there's catalytic change, and Nafis is catalytic. Uh, it's positive transformation. Again, it's letting go. <clears throat> These two let go of the need to stay in the tower and jumped out. <laughs> and again, we there's no way to know what happened. You know, they could, this could not be as tall as it looks like. Um, there could be a soft landing below. There could be water and they fell into the water and it's deep enough that, you know, they didn't hit bottom and die, you know. it. So we don't know. All we know is that they made that, there was that catalytic experience of the lightning coming in. 
which in a sense you can look at uh, well, so willows like that definitely but not these is some something comes in and interrupts okay you've got that line that strikes this way across it's interrupting that flow and suddenly it's it's causing you to act in a way that maybe you know with a little more inner authority you you tell yourself well okay i'm done with this i need to move on and i need to transform that into something else and what is that something else it's the empress and creating something new and healing healing i think is a real strong component to this uh, we see the empress sitting on her uh well, it's a lovely type of chair. You could call it a throne. Uh, but you've got kind of like a pillow behind here, a round pillow right there. You see her shield here is in the shape of a heart. And you see the glyph of Venus right there. Um, you see abundance all around her. You see her, her crown of stars. So she's very much the goddess. And, 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 and in the Empress, in, in most Empress cards, sometimes you can see it and sometimes you can't. But she's actually pregnant. And she was, she's getting ready to, uh, 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 the whole three energy is going to be mind, body, spirit, balance. With all of that, you're, you're, you're actually, she's giving birth to creation here. So... After we have the need to do something here and to let go of sadness and grief, it's really getting in the way of, of our ability to, to essentially function uh, in a way that's happy and positive and, and the Laetitia side of things, basically. Living in joy. Uh, the Tristitia pulls us down into the muck of the ego to the point that we can no longer find that joy. So you're looking at both sides of the same coin there. One where it might be a whole lot of joy, maybe a little too much sometimes, but, but on the other side of things, you can't see any of that. And so you need that inner friction, that inner nothies to let go of those things uh, and to use the inner authority that you have the, the Aries energy that you have to motivate you out of that mindset. So, so it, it's both the inner, the inner uh, authority, but there's the motivation there. Because it takes a lot to let go of that. You get down there so far, it's hard. And then you see everything through that lens. And you, you can't see joy anywhere. You can't be happy because you're so upset and so caught up in what happened that you, or at least what you think happened, it could be that as well. Uh, maybe it was just misperception and it's not really uh, what we think of. Uh, but, but basically... Uh, we have the emperor, we have the tower that comes in and there's the transformation where you let go of everything and you move on, even though, you know, it's downward there. Uh, but, but at the same time, the principle behind it is something catalytic happens. And what happens is soul comes in and says, you know what, enough. You know, you've, you've been upset long enough. Now it's time to move on and to, to transform yourself, transform your perceptions, see this differently. It doesn't mean that, you know, you don't recognize that something really awful happened or something crappy happened and someone was really not very nice to you or, or betrayed you or, you know, all that stuff can still be true. All right. Uh, it doesn't mean that that because you let go of the emotions surrounding it, that what happened is not true. It actually happened. It's just that if you stay in that mindset of grief and anger and condemnation and, and sadness and all of that, you're never going to move forward. We tend to get stuck there. And there needs to be something catalytic in this case. Uh, it, 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 you're really talking about higher awareness being the catalyst for this. And so taking time in meditation, taking time to rethink things uh, and, and to see things as, as, okay, this did happen. Yes, it was a bad thing. But the only way that it stays bad is if I stay upset. Uh, at some point, you have to just give yourself that peace of mind. And sometimes it really takes something, you know, big. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's a conversation with somebody, a wise mentor, or a therapist or something or or somebody that's that you regard as as someone who you can go to for advice. It could be something the emperor could be signifying even something like that, not just your own inner authority, but in fact, going to somebody who is is able to say look 
let's put this all in perspective here. The emperor is very pragmatic, so, so he could be representing somebody like that, where you seek out somebody. But when you're seeing uh, the major arcana cards, I tend to look upon that as soul archetypes. So to me, all you really need to do is let higher awareness, higher self say, this is what you need to be doing. Higher, you know, your soul needs knows exactly what needs to happen. It's just that when we get into the body, we forget that. And we have to actually put our mindset there so that we can we can really make better use of that awareness uh, and we forget it we just get caught up in that moment and we can't let it go so again you can look at it both ways if you want to you know th this could be the your own inner authority or it could be seeking out someone who you view as 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 who, who understands the bigger picture who can give you the advice you need who can help put you into this perspective and then allow that transformation and rebalancing to to come into play so you're not so at one end of of, of the equation that you're somewhere in the center or maybe a more a little maybe more heavily weighted on the positive side of things that might even be better uh, and then you can give birth to something new a new direction, a new, uh, a new uh, a set of feelings where you have things, you can see it in a better perspective. Uh, again, the Empress is about love, fertility. She's the mother aspect. It's about the womb, abundance, being receptive. Uh, with Venus, you're talking beauty uh, and also success. So, but all of that is creation oriented. And, and realistically, when you get on the other side of things, you can now move forward. Um, if it was a relationship that was bad and, and you broke up and, and the one party did something really awful, um, you need that level of healing and the Empress can provide that as well. You need to be able to heal those wounds and be able to trust again so that you can then maybe move forward in a new relationship when the time is right. Uh, not not saying that that's necessarily this moment, but at the same time, if you don't get past what did happen in some way, either your own inner authority, your own higher awareness, or going to somebody who is a wise counselor of some kind in your life, um, you know, a parent or something, going to your father, uh, if your father's still alive, then you, you could go to your father if you have a good relationship with him and say, Dad, this is what happened. I, I know I need to move away from it, but but can we talk about this? And, and so you can help me see this in a more realistic perspective because the emperor is, is quite realistic when he needs to be. And again, as long as he's not, you know, ego <laughs> ego minded and that sort of blows all that out of the water but in this case i don't think so i think it's more trying to get things in order trying to that's another part of the four trying to put things in order so that you can you can see things from a realistic perspective let that then transform and rebalance your mindset and your heart and and your emotions uh, and your spirituality. Let all of that find its balance again. When you look at uh, the 16th card, it's a seven numerology. And so you re it really does look like the scales, doesn't it? You know, where here's the, the middle part and here's the two pans of the scales. They're finding a rebalancing. And that's what I think the tower um, really uh, uh is about but you can't ignore the lightning bolt coming in that's the catalytic experience that causes you to wake up causes you to realign yourself to to get that that and, and maybe it was the the catalyst was was the emperor at, the, at this point either higher awareness or talking to somebody trusted who can maybe give you a different take on something you know, who can say to you, well, you know, I think you saw this coming. You know, these were the things you told me about. These were the things that 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 have, that or you just told me about. And and here are the things that that 
that were really the signs that this was not going to be a productive relationship for you. And so when you realize that, it's like, oh, I was so caught up in it that I ignored those things. Well, you learn something, don't you? You learn something from the experience that, hey, when, when the signs are there, you need to pay attention. And you can't let the infatuation side of love prevent you from seeing the truth about that person. And so maybe the whole experience was there to open your eyes to that sort of thing. So the next relationship you have, maybe one where you look with uh, an eye toward discernment a little bit better, instead of letting yourself get caught up in the emotion and the love and the lovey-dovey of it, basically, right? And you don't see that person for who they really are. Um, and, and it's not that, you know, you're, you're going to meet someone who's perfect. We never do. None of us are. But there's, there's a, a point at which, you know, there's too much of one particular, you know, thing about them that, that it's just, it's, un, it's untenable. It's not doable. So, so you just have to be able to say, okay, I can't, I can't be in this relationship anymore with you. You have to be able to do that. Well, that doesn't always happen, does it? All too often, it doesn't happen. And so we're, we're stuck there. And we're just so blown away by what happened, we can't even move. And I think that that's really what this is about. No matter what this is, or, or what the circumstances are in your life that make you feel this way, um, I'm just giving, you know, one example of what it might be. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is, but there could be something, you know, maybe you had a, a business partnership where you didn't really, you thought you knew the person, but then over time you discovered you really didn't. And so some change has to take place and, and you feel bad about it. And maybe you feel like, boy, I don't even trust myself to do, to, to move forward anymore because obviously I should have seen that. Well, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't have, but at this point that doesn't matter. That's the lesson part of things. So we get caught up in that as well, where in the self recriminations of everything and somehow we're supposed to know and, and maybe we are, but maybe we didn't. And so that's the lesson. You don't need to beat yourself up about it, but yet we do. And I think that that's the thing where North East comes in and, and this Norn Rune saying, look, at some point you have to let that stuff go and you have to manifest something else. You can't stay there. And yet we try to, but there has to be something catalytic that either your own light bulb going off, which could be catalytic or talking to someone else or, or the higher self doing some meditation and making that realization that, Hey, um, I'm going to learn, take something from all this. I'm going to learn something from it and I'm going to apply it for, to my future endeavors here so that I'm a little better prepared for, for the challenges that I'm going to face in life. Uh, and, and with the Empress, you know, realistically, you have to have some peace. You have to have some healing, some mind, body, spirit balance, some reintegration, if you will, uh, to where your focus is not on the situation itself that happened or the individual the, himself or herself. It, you're not focused there. You're focused on you. And what are you going to do now? You know, how are you going to live your life? How, how are you going to proceed on? How are you going to carry on? And, and uh, so I think that, that it may in fact, uh, you know, from Monday, you know, seeing a situation from a balanced higher perspective, and then understand the need to let go of any self-deception or deception and find a path forward together. So I think that this could, this, this may in fact be something that is, that is, you know, going to link up with Monday. Um, I think that I'm going to be writing it up in a very similar way. Um, when I do the write up on this for the, for uh, Substack and medium and, and Patreon, I, I don't generally, I mentioned this last time, I don't generally put the write ups on the blog itself over at stepping aside, but, um, but I may, you know, maybe I'll do it there. Maybe I'll take the video page off and just, you know, and, cause I have them on the side panel. The, the, the current videos that I do are, are on the side panel of the blog. So. You know, so you can see them there and, and it just takes you right to YouTube when you open them up. Uh, but I think that that given that both days we had uh, uh, major arcana cards for all of it, I just think that that this is a big deal that's going on in, in, in your life uh, in some way where you have to let go of, of the negativity, you have to let go of... Uh, 
the 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 tristitia of it, the grief, the condemnation, getting stuck uh, in in anger and and you know wanting to get even and and that's a real motivating force, but it's not the one that's going to get you where you need to go. Um, having the the own inner sense of of grounding that that the emperor is going to give you, um, ex exploring that and how that feels uh, is very important. Letting that that awareness of okay i understand the truth of what happened let that truth transform you with the tower and uh, if there was any self-deception going on then then you realize that and you see it for what it is and don't judge yourself for it it's just something that happened and you're going to learn from it um, or if there was a deception from someone else um, again Take the message behind it. Don't get caught up in the emotion of it. Let those emotions settle out. Let them let them reintegrate in a way that's positive and healing and loving that the Empress suggests here and uh, move on into a better mindset, into a better emotional uh, emotion, emotional type of, of resonance than, than what you're in right now. Um, getting stuck doesn't help anything, uh, but but moving on does. And if there's transformation that needs to happen, well, then that's what needs to happen. We saw that on Monday with the death card. That's about transformation. And now we have the tower in this one. Uh, let's see. The chariot could, it could also uh, have to do with the emperor. Uh, that could maybe relate a little bit there. And then the moon and the empress having to do with emotions. Uh, and, and also the Empress is also earth, earth, earthy. And so, so if you're talking about that, the practicality of the, of the Emperor, you, you're seeing, you're, you're almost seeing energetically what you need to do uh, as far as letting go of, of stuff that's no longer useful and is just keeping you in a place where you just don't feel like you can get out of it. Well, you can, you actually can. And, and it's either awareness of your own that you, that you realize or talking to a friend or a counselor or something and again that may be what the emperor is trying to suggest uh, talking to someone where they can give you a different perspective of how to order all of this put it all in order and understand what happened and and go and and then take it as a learning experience and let go of that emotion that's keeping you stuck in a place where you just feel like oh I'm never going to be happy again well you will you will be happy again it's just when do you want that to happen um, I mean obviously you know you you spend your time and 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 it's realistic to do that but it's how much time are you going to spend on something uh, and I think I, I know I tend to ruminate on things way longer than I should and it keeps me in a mindset that 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 I can't get out of that. I have to actually make myself stop doing that to stop doing that. So I, I think that people naturally go there and and it's hard. It's hard to get up and, and get moving and get going and, and doing things and the depression sets in and it's like, oh my goodness. Well, it's not a healthy place to be. And, and having that inner friction to say, you know what, I'm worth more than this to myself. I'm worth more than this. I don't need to be here. I need to be happy. I need to be, you know, motivated. I need to be initiating new experiences. I need to be pursuing new opportunities, whatever that is, right? Instead of staying in the tristitia of it all and not allowing yourself to do that. Uh, on Monday, Rado and Conjunctio were really reinforcing one another. Those two rooms were uh, where we're moving forward together with other people. This may be um, either an extension of that, or it could simply be what you need to do to get it together yourself. So whether there's a direct connection to Monday, uh, uh, there may, it may just be two components like it was the week before. The week before we were talking about legacy and making use of that. But then on Thursday, see, then it's like, okay, so the, the, the legacy that was passed to that person, what is that person doing? Is there still life? There's still things to do, even though you've passed on a legacy to your children, you know, now they're running the business or what have you, uh, you still have a life and you still have something that you can do. So, so they, they, they connected, but in a, in kind of a, not really indirect way, but yet in an indirect way. And this may be the same sort of thing. 
um, you know, letting go of uh, finding a path forward together um, and, and being able to trust that, that experience, that integrated experience. Here, again, uh, that was with others. This feels to me like it's more about the integrating the self and letting that transformation take place. So, and, and maybe that this is really the precursor to Monday's reading. You, you take care of yourself, you get that in, in order, and then you can then go on on a shared experience with other people. So... So maybe that's really how we need to read it, just sort of reverse the two and make this Monday's reading and Monday's reading, today's reading. But, but again, I think that, that these are powerful influences for the week. So something is happening that needs to be changed, that there needs to be a shift in perception. Um, and it's kind of a big deal. It's, it, it's clearly something that's holding you back, some kind of negative thinking that's holding you back from being able to, in this case, find joy and, and grounding and, and a more realistic view of things. So, so I guess that's it. That's enough for the week. Anyway, this is, these are just very cool looking cards, don't you think? I love the way they did them. I mean, it's still the Rider weight, and I, I actually prefer the Rider weight to any more than to my uh, uh, non-traditional decks. I think that that although they're pretty and and they can have some value, the Heindel deck in particular is just gorgeous. Um, I think that uh, I think that that for for just doing tarot. It, for me anyway, it makes more sense to use right away. So it has the, I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at the, the type of, uh, uh, the scenes in each picture or in each card that, that, uh, uh, the, the interpretations have been developed from. So if you're switching all that around, you need to really understand what the person right, you know, drawing the cards really meant. Uh, and, and so when you can do that, then it's easy to, to read those cards. But otherwise, it's like, oh, these are really cool cards, but I'm not sure how to read them. <laughs> you know, so anyway, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, think about this. And, and if it doesn't apply to you, maybe it applies to someone you know. And uh, maybe you'll be the emperor in their life and the wise mentor that, that can help bring some kind of order to their chaotic feelings. And, and you can help them do that and be that catalytic uh, force in their lives. It could even be something like that. So anyway, you know, to help them find peace and, and be able to be creative again. So anyhow, thanks for watching and have a good weekend and come back again on monday for another edition of as above so below be good to yourself be good to one another and blessed be